Good evening. Welcome to St. Peter's Lutheran Church. This Sunday is the 14th Sunday after Pentecost. And in God's word, we are reminded that we are drawn by the Father to believe in Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. We say no to anything that would sever us from our dear Lord and his will. We begin with the opening hymn, 402. Please stand for evening prayer. This is the first time we've done evening prayer since before COVID. If you don't remember the notes, you may want to open to the front of the hymnal, page 52. Oh Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall Lord God, you have brought us safely to this hour of evening prayer. 
We thank you for providing all that we need for body and life. Bless us who have gathered in your name. Forgive our sins, speak to our hearts, dispel our sorrows with the comfort of your word, and receive our hymns of thanks and praise. Through Jesus Christ, our living Savior, who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated, and we'll sing Let My Praise, Prayer Rise Before You on page 55. Let our prayers be acceptable in your sight. Come and help us in time of need, that we may sing your praise in holy joy, now and forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We turn to page 92, for Psalm 71 on page 92. The congregation will sing the refrains and the glory be to the Father. to which I can always go, for you are my rock and my fortress. Blessed are they who hope, who hope in the Lord. Since my youth, O God, you have taught me, and to this day I declare your marvelous deeds. Even when I am old and gray, do not forsake me, O God, till I declare your power to the next generation, your might to all who are to come. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed are they. Lord God, support us all the years of our lives that we may follow your gracious will, both in good times and bad, 
that our lives may be an unending testimony to your love and faithfulness. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The first lesson is recorded in Exodus chapter 7, beginning with the 8th verse. In haughty arrogance, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, refused to submit to the Lord and his will. The Lord said to Moses and to Aaron, When Pharaoh says to you, Give us a warning sign, then you are to tell Aaron, Take your staff and throw it down in front of Pharaoh, and it will become a snake. Then Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh. They did just as the Lord had commanded. Aaron threw down his staff in front of Pharaoh and his officials, and it became a snake. But when Pharaoh also called for his wise men and sorcerers, those magicians of Egypt did the same thing by their occult practices. They each threw down their staffs, and those staffs became snakes. However, Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs, but Pharaoh's heart was hard, and he did not listen to them, just as the Lord had said. This is the word of our God. The second lesson is written in the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 11. Moses willingly forsook the glories of Egypt, understanding that they were far outweighed by the glories of heaven. By faith, Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, when he grew up. He chose to be mistreated with God's people rather than enjoy sin for a little while. He considered disgrace for the sake of Christ as greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. By faith he left Jesus without fearing the king's wrath because he persevered as one who sees him who is invisible by faith he celebrated the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not strike them down. This is the word of our God. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Alleluia. We continue with hymn 405.
please stand. Grace to all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with an undying love. Amen. We read from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 6. When they heard it, many of his disciples said, This is a hard teaching. Who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples were grumbling about this, he asked them, Does this cause you to stumble in your faith? What if you would see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? The Spirit is the one who gives life. The flesh does not help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit, and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning those who would not believe and the one who would betray him. He said, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is given to him by my Father. After this, many of his disciples turned back and were not walking with him anymore. So Jesus asked the twelve, You do not want to leave too, do you? Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the word of the Lord. Please be seated. <clears throat> Do you know any hot button issues or words or names? that are polarizing, about which people dig in their feet and take their stand on either side of those issues? Let me name some. Critical race theory, mask mandates, COVID vaccine mandates, voter fraud, Afghanistan, President Biden, President Trump. All of those issues are polarizing among many people. But it really doesn't matter what side you stand on in those issues, because you know what? Jesus shed his blood for all of us, and that is what truly unites us as one. Today we're not going to talk about polarizing political issues. Rather, we're going to be reminded of the truth that not just politics, but also the only true and saving religion, Christianity, is polarizing. That's the truth that the Holy Spirit teaches us through this portion of God's Holy Word. He says that the Gospel is a hard teaching. It is the gospel that causes some to stumble in their faith and to unbelief. And it is the gospel that causes others to believe. Jesus was over halfway through his three-year public ministry. He was at the pinnacle of his popularity he withdrew to a remote area on the other side of the Sea of Galilee, but nevertheless, large crowds thronged to him because of the miraculous signs he had performed on those who were sick and crippled. Because there was no way to feed all of these people, Jesus decided to miraculously provide for them. He caused five loaves of bread and two small fish to multiply to the point where 5,000 men plus women plus children could have their fill, and there were 12 basketfuls left over. After he dismissed the crowds, he sent his disciples in the boat to return to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, and he withdrew to the mountains to pray. And in the middle of the night, the disciples were caught in a tremendous tempest, 
But Jesus miraculously walked on the water out to them. He got into the boat, and just like that, the storm subsided, and they were safely on the other shore. In the morning, the crowds came to look for him, and he chided them because they were looking for him in order to have their bellies filled. He told them not to work for food that spoils, but food that lasts unto eternal life. And it was food that Jesus himself would provide for them. Because of their teachers of the law, they were taught that in order to get eternal life, they had to work for it. They had to earn it with their own efforts and good works. And so they asked Jesus, what works do you want us to do, to do the works of God? And Jesus reminded them that eternal life is not earned by human effort, by human works. Rather, it comes only to those who believe in the one that the Heavenly Father sent from heaven to this earth to secure eternal salvation and everlasting life for a world full of sinners. Well, the crowds really didn't like what they were hearing. And so they demanded, what miraculous sign will you show us, will you do for us, that we may see it and believe you, because our forefathers ate manna in the wilderness. How in the world could they ask Jesus for a miraculous sign? Didn't he just give them one? He fed 5,000 people. But to them, that was nothing compared to what Moses did. You may remember that Moses for 40 years led the children of Israel through the howling, barren wasteland of the Sinai Peninsula. And for 40 years, six mornings a week, the desert floor was covered with that heavenly bread called manna. Enough manna to feed over one and a half million people. In comparison, Jesus he only fed 5,000 people, and that was only one afternoon. Moses fed one and a half million people in an entire nation for 40 years. Jesus fed them with earthly bread. Moses fed them with bread that came down from heaven. But Jesus reminded them that they were absolutely wrong. It was not Moses that gave them bread from heaven. It was God that gave them bread from heaven. And then he reminded them that he is the true and genuine bread from heaven that came to give eternal life to the world. And this eternal life would be secured through his innocent death on the cross, but he wouldn't stay dead on the third day. He would rise again from the dead and then he would ascend to that place where he was before in everlasting glory. And on the last day, he would raise from the dead all those who believed in him as the bread of life, that they might live in everlasting glory in heaven. He would return to the place from which he came. And so the crowds were skeptical. They said, how can he say that he came down from heaven? Isn't this Joseph's son, Jesus? whose mother and father we know? You see, they were completely ignorant of the virgin birth, the fact that Jesus cloaked himself in frail human flesh in the womb of the Virgin Mary by the power of the Holy Spirit, and this way he could be the true and genuine bread from heaven that gives eternal life. He could say, anyone who comes to me will never be hungry and Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. He told them outright, if they did not believe in him, they could not have everlasting life. And after they heard all of these things, many of his own students, his own disciples, said, this is a hard teaching. Who can still listen to it? You see, the gospel of Jesus Christ isn't hard to understand, but it's hard to believe. As a matter of fact, 
by nature, it's impossible to believe the gospel. The Bible says that the gospel is foolishness to sinful mankind. The Bible says that by nature, the sinful mind is hostile to God. It cannot submit to God's law, nor will it do so. That's why Jesus said no one could believe in Jesus unless the Heavenly Father drew that person to Christ. And those who insisted on remaining in their stubborn unbelief, for those people, the gospel was a hard teaching. So hard, in fact, that they no longer wanted to listen to it. And in this way, the gospel caused them to stumble into unbelief. Today, there are countless people who continue to stumble and remain stuck in unbelief when it comes to the gospel. You see, they would rather replace Jesus Christ with their own way of getting to heaven. They say things like, well, you know, I'm not such a bad person. I try not to hurt anybody's feeling. I try not to gossip. I try not to say anything bad about other people. I try to be honest. I always try to look out for the welfare of other people. I might not be perfect, but after all, I'm a lot better than a lot of those people out in the world. That's just going to have to be good enough to get me to heaven. But what did Jesus say? The works of the flesh do not help at all. The only thing a person can earn by striving to be perfect in this life and failing to attain perfection is everlasting damnation in hell. And those who are hardened in unbelief, they don't want to hear that message. And so what do they do? Like many of Jesus' disciples 2,000 years ago, they turn their backs on Jesus and they walk away. Who else turns their backs on Jesus and walk away? Those who can't stand hearing that Jesus is the only way to heaven. They say, you mean only those who repent of their sins and look to Jesus for forgiveness have eternal life in heaven? What about the countless millions of people who never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ? What about all the major world religions? What about Hinduism and Buddhism and Judaism and Islam and Mormonism and Jehovah's Witnesses, and Eastern Spiritualism, and all of those other religions out in the world. You mean to tell me that they're all wrong, and Christianity is the only genuine and true faith? Well, what did Jesus say? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. The one who believes in Him is not condemned. But the one who does not believe in Him stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's eternally begotten Son. When there was a mass migration, of Jesus' disciples leaving him, he turned to the twelve and he said to them, you don't want to leave too, do you? And that's when Peter replied with those most beautiful words that are on the rare dose behind me. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. You see, God the Heavenly Father had drawn them to faith through that Spirit-filled Word of God. As Jesus himself said, the Spirit is the one who gives life. The flesh helps not at all. The words I have spoken to you, they are Spirit and they are life. You see, through that hard teaching of the Gospel, God the Holy Spirit created the miracle of faith in their hearts so that the gospel was no longer hard for them to listen to, but it was a joy and a delight to hear that Jesus is the bread of life who gives eternal life to all who believe. Today there still is a mass migration away from Jesus Christ, those who turn their backs on him and leave. And they don't just ignore us, they attack us. 
throughout the world in many nations, every day there are Christians who are physically persecuted, attacked, and killed because of their faith. In our nation, Christianity and what Jesus stands for in his holy word are scoffed at. They are labeled as narrow-minded and loveless, and they are dismissed as out of touch. There's a great pressure on all of us to turn our backs on Jesus and walk away. That's why when Jesus says to each one of you, you don't want to go away either, do you? We will all confess boldly along with Peter, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and we know that you are the Holy One of God, the genuine bread who came down from heaven to give true life at peace with our God today and to give us everlasting life with our God forever in paradise. Amen. Please stand. And the God of peace himself will soon crush Satan under your feet. The Lord be with all of you. Amen. We continue with the Song of Mary. It's on page 4 in the bulletin, page 57 in the front of the hymnal.
Please stand for the Lord have mercy on page 59. In the closing hours of this day, hear us as we pray, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the well-being of people everywhere, for the growth of your church in all the world, and for the strengthening of all who serve and worship here, we pray, O Lord. Christ, have mercy. For one another, young and old, for your blessings that come with every stage of life, and for joy in doing your will, we pray, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our public servants who work day and night to bring protection, justice, learning, and health to this and every place, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For favorable weather and bountiful harvests, for clothing and food, for health of body, mind, and spirit, and for deliverance from all sin and every form of evil, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful who have gone before us, who have shared with us your good news, whose souls are now at rest in your heavenly kingdom, we give you thanks, O Lord. Thanks be to God. In thanksgiving for your many and varied gifts to us, we now commend ourselves to your care. Be our shield and strength, O Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works come from you. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments. Defend us also from the fear of our enemies, that we may live in peace and quietness. Through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. 
congregation may be seated. Just a couple of announcements. The new meditations are in the information station on the sides, in the pouches on the sides. So pick one up for you and your family for family devotions. Also on September 11th, we have Fondue Fest and we're going to have a booth. And we need people to man that booth. So if you can help for an hour or two, please see the sign-up sheet to help man that booth for Pastor Boringer. As the ushers greet you, say hello to those who are around you, introduce yourself to those who don't know, and feel free to visit with one another. Thank you.